gentlemen, it is time to see the one and only Nathan Myers operate the CS56B with expert commentator Dan Gurney. During this Spotlight Series, let's learn more about his capabilities and see what Command for Compaction can do. Fellas? Thank you, Rutledge. Welcome to Con Expo 2020. Glad to have you out here at the Caterpillar stand today and all this week. As Rutledge said, my name is Dave Gurdon, and I'm a soil compaction specialist for Caterpillar. Now, don't laugh too hard or feel sorry for me. It's actually a job that I wanted and lobbied hard for. But I'm excited today to introduce you to our new, brand new, semi-autonomous command for compaction technology. Now, don't go grabbing your phones and checking your emails just yet. Uh, I know I said those dreaded words, soil compaction. It's usually enough to put most people to sleep. But if you stick with me over the next several minutes, I promise you're not going to need two red cans of Red Bull to get through this. Now, part of my role at Caterpillar, I get to talk to customers and visit with job sites uh, each and every day. And one of the questions I love to ask is, what keeps you up at night? Now, the majority of people answer, hey, job site safety. Right? You've got to keep our people safe and quality. You've got to do quality work. What about labor? That's a huge I read an article the other day that said about 81% of contractors in the U.S. are struggling and are having a hard time filling positions. At the same time, three quarters of them are planning to add people to their workforce this year. It's getting harder and harder to find good and retain good people, skilled people, to operate construction equipment. So far, would you agree with me? At least some of the struggles you're facing? I see at least one head nodding. Thank you. Uh, so. <laughs> Now let's think about that in terms of a typical soil compaction scenario, right? Soil compaction, one of those phases of the job site, tends to get overlooked, overshadowed. I've even heard some customers refer to it as a necessary evil. Usually, if the compact can keep up with whatever spreads occurred in front of it, that's good enough. You're usually not tying a revenue to it. Uh, you're tying a revenue to moving your compact. And don't tell my boss I said this, but I'll admit compaction can sometimes be boring and monotonous work. That's usually why you guys end up putting your apprentice or newest operators on the road. Couple that with the fact that a lot of times you end up rotating different operators on the same machine throughout the day, and that leaves you a lot of room for inconsistent results in soil compaction. What's the big deal, right? Who cares about inconsistency? Well, that inconsistency a lot of times can cause expensive retests and rework failed compaction tests. But what if you could offer a solution that could remove some of that use? What if there was a tool out there that allows operators of almost any skill level to operate at a high rate of acceptance? That's exactly what our brand new Command for Compaction offers. Command is an operator-assisted semi-autonomous technology. Now, you may have seen our technology of some of our other command systems. While those are focused on the remote control of a machine, Command for Compaction is a little different. There's still an operator in the seat, but once they tell the system where and how to compact, the machine takes over from there. If you're still wondering, yeah, it's going to drive itself. No matter the skill level, Command for Compaction is going to improve coverage, give you more consistent results. Trust me, I'm living proof of that. As important as anything, it's easy to set up and use. Connects to your commonly used base stations you're already, you're already running the greatest builds off of. And as your job sites inspect, your job site specs and timelines are becoming tighter and tighter, it's important for you to have technology that makes you more efficient. But it can't be so complicated that you need an entire back office for you. And we're going to show you right now that that concern is virtually a non-issue. To help out with the demo today, as Rose mentioned, we got Nathan Myers. His mic's not turned on yet. I actually saw him earlier today trying to get a selfie with Mike Grove. He needed to get help from the 12-year-old. Not the most tech savvy, but still he does with the man. Nathan, let's show these folks that with three easy steps, command for compaction can help them on their way to more predictable and uniform compaction. Now, the first step in using command is you have to tell the system where to compact. As I mentioned earlier, you don't need a site design file to load on here. We're going to physically use the machine to define the work area. We can do that in one of two ways. If there's an old area that we had already compacted before and we're just doing a new layer, we can go ahead and load that from the command operators, what they demonstrated right now. 
if it's a brand new area, we're going to have to go ahead and record it. Hey, Nate, when we play the video on the big screen, do you mind walking us through that recording process? Oh, most definitely. Thanks, Dave. So, we got our screen right here, uh, and as you watch up on the video there, what we have to do first is define the area that we're going to use. So, it's simple as record, pause, and stop. So, it's a three-step process here. So, I want to highlight, outline more or less the area that I need. So, I'll go down one way, hit the record button as I travel. When I get to the opposite end, I hit pause, transition over to the far side that I need compacted, hit record again, uh, travel the, that desired area. I can even do it on curves, which helps me out. And then when I'm done, I hit stop, and that outlines the whole area. And I can see on my on my screen up here that whole area that's highlighted. So it automatically fills it in. So there's a lot of things that I can do it at my uh, my fingertips. Excellent. Well, that video finishes playing. Now that we've told the system where we want to compact, we're going to have to tell it how to compact. Nathan, do you mind showing us how to do that as you set up for compaction? Yeah, so there's a multitude of different uh, settings that it can have for this. So, with the touch of a button, I bring up my settings menu, and then underneath my work area, which I demonstrated a little bit earlier, is our compaction menu. So I can select on that. Now there's three different options here. Number of passes, ground speed, and overlap. So let's dive into the first one, number of passes, and see what I got here. So I can set it if I want to turn uh, automatically have the high amplitude uh, vibratory drum turn on, how many, uh, how many passes I want with that. If I want low amplitude, I can select that as well. Since we're here in the dirt, a little wet, I don't think I'm going to vibrate anything today. But let's look at the passes down here. It says I have eight passes. Well, I think 10 is going to be my better option for today, so I can select that. Ground speed. Typically in this application, anywhere from three to three and a half is kind of the, the ideal speed that I want on here. So it's at 2.9, so tap on the button. I'm going to change it to three. The next one down is overlap. So this is important too. We all got those, we got those people like Josh Hayes out here in the audience. You know, he doesn't like to see that little line, you know, as I as I roll. So I want to make sure I overlap it. So anywhere between six and uh, six and twelve inches is kind of the area that I want. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go full twelve inches here. All right. So I select that, and that brings me home. Awesome. Awesome, Amy. Thank you. So now we've told it where and how to come back. The last step is simple. Hey, he's just going to make sure the area around him is safe. We'll go ahead and release the parking brake. And then he press the off. After that, you'll see that the machine takes over from there. Once Nathan presses auto, you got to press OK. Now you can see Nathan's in the cab, but he's not actively controlling the machine. The command system is going to control the steering, speed, direction changes, and vibration of the machine. What do you think about that, Dave? Yeah. What do you say we change the job title from expert soil compaction operator to compaction process and safety? I tell you what, this isn't a bad job. Hey, does it come with pay raise? <laughs> Not sure you're going to get that pay raise out. Hey, I got to try. I got to try. But you know what's really neat is it actually it tells me I'm on auto on here. And I got this audible backup alarm, so it's it's giving me warnings if, if I get it close to anything. You can see no hands, it's transitioning. But what's really neat is up top, where it says the auto status, you can zoom in on the cab here and, and show that display. It tells me the amount of minutes that I have left. So it says I got 15, 14 uh, minutes, 58 seconds to finish this. So if I had a huge job, it's actually telling me what I can do out there and how, how much longer, you know, figure out what lunch break is. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for explaining that. So as you can see, by automating the compaction process, what we're really doing is we're eliminating any difference in skill levels. That compaction is going to get done consistently, the right way, the correct way that you intend to do it every time, no matter who's sitting on the seat. Speaking of consistency and compaction, one of the big reasons you have inconsistency is due to poor coverage. So if any of you have ever operated a soil compactor before, uh, you know that it's pretty hard that with no visual reference to drive that machine in a straight line, especially for folks. If you've never operated a solar compactor, I equate it to watching a millennial try to do a parking spot without using the cameras or sensors. It's tough. 
So at Caterpillar, we decided to do a study. How much could demand for compaction increase that coverage over versus an office operator? We had an operator compacting area that's roughly 820 square yards. We had to use six passes to get full compaction. After that, we had that same operator use the command system to set up and compact. What we found was demand for compaction increased the coverage by over 60%. It could easily be the difference between you passing density tests or not. By ensuring or compacting with the correct number of passes at the correct time of setting with the correct speed and that consistent overlap, you're setting yourself up for more uniform results. Now, I had mentioned a little earlier that safety and labor are some of those big concerns that contractors have. And actually, our CAT safety services folks tell me that about 40% of the job site injuries that happen to workers under 35 years of age happen while they're on their first year on the job. Now, let's think back to that compaction scenario, right? We're putting our apprentice or newest operators on this machine. They're working in a busy phase of the job site, right? There's machine spread material in front of them. There's great checkers and density checkers behind them. Oh, and remember, this machine's going about 50% of the time in reverse. Point is, there's frequently machines and other people in and around the machine at all times. Don't you think it'd be nice if we can alert the operator to that? Well, command for compaction includes that integrated object detection system that was mentioned in the previous demo. Now, as Nathan is completing this pass here, I'll go ahead and get behind him. And on that next pass, what I want you to notice is that icon on the bottom right of his screen. That icon's going to give him three levels of warning. As mentioned before, that's speed dependent, right? It's going to change from yellow to orange to red as Nathan gets near him. Now, it's really important to note here that we're talking object detection, we're not talking object avoidance. So Nathan's still the operator in the seat, he still makes that choice to, to decide if I'm a pile of dirt and you can run me over, or if I'm a person and you should stop, which I'm hoping he chooses to do. So as Nathan's backing up here, if you can see on the screen, you'll see that icon on the bottom right, and it's gonna end up alerting him that I'm back here. And if not, I'm gonna jump out of the way real quick. So you see, Nathan saw me, he heard that audible tone, and he stopped the machine. Oh, hold on here. Let's, uh, uh -oh. Oh, let me turn my mic off here. Nate, Nate, hey, 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 hey. Yeah. <laughs> Josh needs help in the back. There's a roller situation back there. And he doesn't like the over. He doesn't overlap, like the overlap. They don't have the command system, so I'm going to go help back there. Come on, really? Good luck. You got this. <laughs> And then the, there's like 10 people that stayed to watch us. I think four hey, are still away. Hey, hey, put your one. Get in there and go. Come on. Oh. Okay, well, I, I guess I'm going to have to finish this on my own here. Um, as I get up in the compactor, let's talk about this common occurrence on your job sites. We're going to take a different operator, put me in the seat. And you might consider me an extreme novice, but yet we're still going to expect that I can get those same compaction results as Nathan was able to achieve. Now that I'm in the cab and I'm ready, I made sure that the area is safe. I'm going to go ahead and release my parking brake. I hit auto. The only thing I have to do is hit this auto resume button. Now the machine starts back up right where Nathan left off. It's going to move forward a little bit so that we can start at that exact spot. No other inputs are needed. We're going to get that same consistent compaction, even though we've used two very different operators' tests. Now, as I finish up compaction here, let's bring it back to what we started out with. What keeps you, our customers, up there? Your job site specs, budgets, timelines, they're getting tighter and tighter. You're finding it harder and harder to find good, skilled people to operate equipment. Sometimes it's hard to find anybody to operate equipment, especially a solar panel. All while you're trying to keep your people safe on the job, that's first and foremost your rule. So command for compaction from Caterpillar, you can turn that novice operator into an expert. You're going to get that more consistent coverage and uniform compaction. You even address that job site safety with that integrated object detection system. Oh, and all at the same time, you're taking that very important first step towards the time, right? This isn't one of those technologies that's three to five years off. This is available today. You're delivering it today. You can start taking advantage of the benefits today. You don't have to wait five years for your job site to catch up. There's a person sitting in the seat. 
Now, if you guys get any questions or want to find any more out about the Man for Compassion, I'm going to be in that technology hub till about 3:30 today. Love to see, love to see you guys. I want to thank you for your time and attention today, and especially for being a cat customer. Thank you. We'll see you around the stand. Nice job. That was awesome. Let's give them a round of applause, everybody. When your dealer services your cat, they know there's a lot more riding on it than just you. Let's do the work.